It's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Good to see you. Tonight is center of light observation. Stepping back further to get a closer look. Paradox and irony is a beautiful thing, I tell you. You take the blue pill, you can wake up in your bed tomorrow morning and believe what you want to believe. You take the red pill, I'll show you just how far the rabbit hole goes. <laughs> Tonight is Center of Light Observation. Looking Glass, Project Looking Glass. Anybody out there familiar with Project Looking Glass? Hello, Rena. Athena, good to see you. KK, I'm not doing YouTube tonight because I have some audio, an audio bite for you, and I don't want to get YouTube slapped. So if it clears tonight, I'm going to, anyway, long story short. So it's just us on Facebook. Welcome, everyone. Um, I was looking for a presentation tonight, and I looked at some notes. Every time one hits me when I'm doing whatever, I write it down in my phone as a reminder. So welcome to Center of Light. Good to see you folks. Let me take a couple things. All right. Tonight we're going to look through the looking glass. What that means in terms to us directly and what it really doesn't in the form of what I'm going to be playing for you as an audio bite a little later which I have said in the recent past the game is over we've already done it so if we already done the it what is the it reached the light worker pinnacle we still have to play the game after all that's the meaning of life to play the game simply for the fun of it and it's the fun of what we're doing that will carry us to that very place where we have already won. This audio bite is gonna come from a military, I wouldn't say whistleblower, informant. Pretty powerful stuff. So tonight we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna look deep within. Center of light observation. It's not enough to see. We must look. Support Center of Light. Welcome back to Center of Light. Tonight is Center of Light Observation. Looking glass. Looking glass. Can we tell the future? We are the future. Uh, for those who are interested in purchasing anything that I just played in the video, thank you, Robert Harrison, and thank all of you. Along with the Lotus Flower Incense Burner, 
comes a packet of Nang Champa Gabati incense. It smells like something you want to put in your ice cream and eat it. If you're interested in any of those gifts, let me know. Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul, my most recent release. The link is in this forum. You can jump see to Amazon to purchase it, uh, this new bestseller, as well as leave me a review, please do. Hello, Majestic. Hello, James. All right. Can we tell the future? I can. You can. I do. We do. Often we get hits, promptings, intuitions. Don't turn down this street. And you don't, and you find out something took place. Or you think of a song and you turn on your radio, and there it is. Can you tell the future? You've done it many times. Think about what you're doing tomorrow. Whatever it is you have planned, you are seeing it as a vision, are you not? You're holding it. I will do this thing tomorrow. Will, what is the will? The will is taking charge, command, that which creates orders, spells, incantations, manifestations, gestations, because right now the window is tomorrow I will do this thing. The human will is a powerful thing. So the gestation would be now until tomorrow. But we're moving into the looking glass, becoming self-realized, understanding and re integrating who we are, that there will be no tomorrow. You want to manifest, you're going to do it now. But it requires to look within. And then the looking glass gets broader, clearer, sharper, has more depth, it has more width, it has more breath, it has more girth, has more information. So it's not only good to see, we must look. So when we begin to look from a pulled back perspective, ironically, we actually gain a closer view of things. It's the pulling back that allows us to see broader because if we're so hunkered in and we mundanely focus how can we see any of what's happening here to make sense of anything at all but yet we come up with these conclusions and our myopic ability and ability ability and ability to, to truly see and we gather these assumptions but can you tell the future you already are tomorrow you plan on doing this so you're holding a vision you made a, a wish a command and you're simply manifesting it in your life. Many of us can step, have stepped back so far for so long that when we look out into the scope of the world, I see it. I see it just as clear as I saw everything else that I looked at this way. I see it. Because in this pulled back perspective, not only am I so mundanely focused on what I think it is that's important, I'm pulled back to watch the dynamic, the dialogue, and the cosmic dance. Show me what is important, and I see it. And so when we begin to ride this wave, we crest as much as we can, and then at the end we hang ten for as long as we can. You begin to see something that's beyond speaking. You begin to see light. And in light is everything. Light contains all information. So when we move, consciously into the light we are already the light when we move consciously into the light we don't be we're not only able to see we are able to see and this seeing i am speaking about is though they are both seeing two different types something happens on this level of seeing what begins to happen is this integration of seeing beyond any of us have ever known. I have glimpsed it. Many of us have glimpsed it. But I'm speaking about being able to stay in this experience to be an ongoing true seeing. Seeing takes on a new thing altogether. It's not this, nor is it that. These are included, but it becomes this. It becomes this. It becomes this. It just becomes this breath, conscious breath, that moves within our being 
which creates this type of multifaceted, multidimensional seeing. This power, the second, this minute, this hour, is right there. How do I do it? You don't do anything except step back, take a breath, relax. Don't start squinting to try to find us something because you will miss everything. So we step back and we allow everything to present itself. And in such a presentation, we become present and we begin to feel the presence itself. And in that presence is all the information that I'm speaking about that we're able to gain and glean, which opens up, opens up the looking glass. It clears it. <sighs> then we begin to see. So we are creating our future. Are we doing it consciously? We are the future. We, have, we are the future we have already become. Now we just simply need to unravel that, speak it, breathe it, project it, eject it, erect it as a people globally, everywhere, all the time. The cabal is dying and they know it. So they're looking for even more drastic measures because they're falling fast and hard. So what's likely going to happen in the near future is they're going to project, project blue beam. They're going to project images in the sky. They have great holographic technology, believe it. And make us believe, or try to, that we are being invaded by aliens when they are the aliens themselves. As I've said many times before, and I'll say it again, an alien, war, an alien race is trying to take over Earth, and they're going to lose. It's prophecy. And you will hear that from this military insider in just a little bit. An alien race is trying to take over the Earth, and they do that by working through many people who are under their influence. Who are the ones? It's obvious. Those who are not congruent and in step with harmony, love, unity, peace, allowance, acceptance, appreciation. Everything else is horseshit. Hello, Tammy, I love you. And they're falling fast. And they're falling hard. Not everyone is conscious of the fact that they're under the influence. So if an alien nation wants to invade Earth, why don't it just come blasting in the skies? Because we will drop all differences in nations and races and religions and sexes and we will collect our united forces and we will blast back. They live thousands of years beyond what we can. So they're not in a hurry. So they pit us against each other. Don't fall for the nonsense. <clears throat> so, we are the future unfolding here now. There are many different timelines being played out. Many are converging, many are emerging, and many are completely separating. How do you know which one you're on? How does it feel to be you? Are you joyful, blissful? Do you have any worry? That is a timeline. You may be joyful and blissful along with many other people, but if other people in their timelines don't have the simple artifact of worry, then that's where you two branch off. How far are you from the, from the crowd? And I don't mean the in crowd, I mean the in crowd. How far are you from your tribe? Are you able to still touch, shake hands, hug, or are you beyond reaching distance at all? There's your measurement stick. You see, it's never hard. It's simple. The looking glass. There are many timelines playing out. Which one are you playing on? One of the most important questions Einstein asked was, ask yourself, do you live in a friendly universe or a hostile one? I live in a friendly universe. So this timeline, I know where it's going. I know the future. I see through the glass. I see through the glass. And many of these timelines will dovetail and will come together and join but any differences will create splits, 
divisions. We're not really at this level yet consciously playing the human game dynamic from here to the future linear timeline. But on broader levels, deeper levels with a clear looking glass, it is able to be seen. Let me look at my notes. Tonight is center of light observation, looking glass. It was pretty tough for me today, which it usually isn't. I get on the internet and I'm looking at project looking glass. And I kept surfing and I narrowed my search, tried other keywords. It was tough. And I went, ah, I remember I heard something a while back. It took me a while, but I found it. And it turned it into an audio bite disguised with music so I wouldn't get a little panking on my hiney. I'm not trying to steal, I'm trying to empower. And I think most of these people who have restrictions on you using their content, I get it. The very people you're trying to help by creating such content is the same people I'm trying to reach and many others are trying to reach. So loosen the, the, the grip a little bit, will you? <laughs> hello, Tammy Collins. Uh, Adana, hello, girl. All right, let's see what time it is. Let me look at my notes. Welcome back, y'all. <clears throat> Red pill or blue pill? Just take it in. This is not the absolute truth, but this is a timeline that has played out for many of us. Let me ask you this, and I'm asking myself this. When is the last time I remember shifting a timeline? <laughs> so this has been happening for many of us collectively for years. <clears throat> One reason, hello Melinda, I've done a lot of research on all of this. One reason this country was in another country called Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, because he's, it said he had a looking glass, a stargate. Sounds interesting. Let's go whip their ass and get their stargate. Just take it in. It's not about me being right. How, the, well, how will this serve me in the future? It's to help put together this piece of what is truly transpiring, not only on, through, and with Mother Earth, but all involved, pro, con, good, bad. It broadens the scope, it broadens the looking glass. And then, the looking glass, the Stargate, the gyroscopic, we're gonna talk about this in a little bit, apparatus conveyance. If you ever seen the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, <clears throat> Matthew McConaughey, and Tom Skerritt, phenomenal movie, phenomenal. There was this conveyance that was a gyroscopic three ring Stargate. Project Looking Glass, Stargates work exactly like they did it, it did in the movie. They have to divulge this information and often they do it through movies. The gyroscope begins to spin, light phenomena begins to happen at the core. So when this Stargate <clears throat> moved from Libya to Iraq, enters trouble with Saddam Hussein. The most powerful country, probably a few others, were looking for this Stargate. It is, just, it is said that on Hussein's deathbed, deathbed, when he was about to be hung, he says, for the love of me, I have no idea why this is happening to me. Why this is happening to me, to some degree or another. They're looking for a Stargate. They do exist. But the greatest Stargate that could ever exist is you. Yes, those, the them, the they, have the technology and hardware to open up portals and Stargates. You 
are the technology and the software that not only can open the Stargate, which you you need to go through the process of, you yourself, as an expression of radiated light on this planet, are the Stargate. Like I said earlier, when you begin to look through the lens of the looking glass, observation, you step back, see what's happening. It's no longer about radiated light that you're trying to take in to learn. Radiated light. This TV I'm looking at is radiated light. The reason we can see things in the, uh, on Earth because everything is reflecting light. The reason space is so dark is because there's nothing there for light to reflect. But when it hits a planet or a celestial body, it begins to glow. Likewise. <laughs> when we're in the flow, yo, sis, bro, and things become really, really clear, we can see through the looking glass. <clears throat> Hence the reason they did not want to go through whatever reasons to process and polish their own looking glass. They just wanted to simply create one and own it and make everyone jealous that they have it. Good reason for war. <clears throat> so what I am going to do at this point since I don't want to get a boo-boo on my hiney, this is a video, I believe, with David Wilcock. I will tell you this. Nothing against David. I'm just not a David Wilcock fan. I did used to like him. Respect him. This was earlier in the years. <clears throat> Still nothing against him. He gets a little woo-woo and whatever. God bless you, David. But this video I'm posting in this room is... Pretty much the idea across the board from all the research I have done. It paints an accurate, an accurate depict. It's an accurate depiction of what I'm conveying tonight. Um, so I, look at that if you would on your at your own leisure. Um, but I am now going to go into the audio segment that I said I would with the military insider tonight is center of light observation. Step back when we're too close, we can't see. Sure, we can see this but we can't see that. In the that is the this. Step back. You will see greater, broader, wider, deeper. It's called power. What's up, James Whitkus? He says, I had memories, I had memories come back of a chair kind of like the Montauk Project but at Diego Garcia underground underwater, underground underwater facility. I know this may be hard for people to believe, but military has more technology than we can possibly even begin to digest and conceive. He's a military insider telling you the biz. So, how do I know that he's just not some other yo no, Yoko, Coco, Cray Cray? I can't explain that to you. You have to listen, not hear, you have to listen. You have to see, not see, you have to look. And in such ways of engaging in the pro such process, you hear another language beyond the talking. The talking actually sullies and soils the potential that lies in the quiet, in, the, in between what he's saying. You hear it in his cadence. You hear it in the texture of his voice. There's no shimmy or shake in his voice. What does he have to gain? When you start falling into this level and using these things as vehicles, we start hearing greater. You start seeing greater, you start feeling greater. And then this is a, a, le this is a level of truly looking through the glass. Through the looking glass, another level of observation. Here we go. I'll see you shortly. Welcome to Center of Light Observation through the looking glass. The government has a project called Project Looking Glass. They're reading futures. Listen closely. Listen closely. One of the caveats that I do have some personal information uh, that I did get personally involved in was some information that had to do with the stargates and looking glass. 
and more specifically the 2012 problem with those projects. The popular opinion of what's out there right now is that the project was shut down because there was a problem when we approached 2012. I've heard it described a number of ways, but to my knowledge, the problem is, is that the timelines converge on that point in time. And when you know enough about the Stargate projects and the Looking Glass project to know how string theory works and how the possibility of possibilities works and how making one choice over here doesn't necessarily mean that the other choice couldn't exist at the same time. But once you get your brain wrapped around this subject, you find out that at the end of 2012, in an easy way to put it, uh, the choices that we make become less and less consequential to the future. And eventually we're pushed into this bottleneck of time, no matter which choice we make. And that's important to the people that had access to Looking Glass because they would use Looking Glass knowing the choices that they would make and the future would pop up. The big mistake was coming up with the possibility of future. And when we started using a computer to say, well, if we make this choice, it's 79% possible that this scenario happens, and 23% are possible or whatever, round numbers, that this scenario would happen. The understanding at the time was that was realistic. However, if you go down the road further and free will continues to exercise itself on this game, that 79% possibility sometimes changes very, very fast. But if you look at the situation in a point of time, it seems very realistic that that's the greatest possibility. What happened was people, very smart people, began to figure out that something big was coming up. Something that made it so all the possibilities of all the future scenarios of any choice any possibility that was fed in and observed through the looking glass inherently ended up in the same future. And no decision, no possibility changed past a certain point. That's the big secret. All possible timelines lead to the same basic set of history in the future. That is what sends everybody that has all of the information, that knows everything, into a blind panic. The people that know everything about Looking Glass, that have gotten all the reports and all the information, the elites of the world, probably figured out that that was the end of the game. And nothing could be manipulated beyond that point. When I was in the military, it would have been before 97 when I got in trouble. One of my particular areas that I was amazingly intuitive about is problem solving slash mission planning or um, more specifically taking a bad mission and fixing it. Certainly knowing how string theory and possible futures works makes it so you can work your mind very quickly to see the reality of what's happening and decide what decisions need to be made to change it for a particular outcome. At a certain point, after they're done hearing the computer tell them, this is what's going to happen over and over and over and over again. All they become focused on is, how do we fix it? What I do know is that I was called in and asked to solve this problem, this timeline contraction problem. And I 
eventually did my due diligence and did all the investigating and basically only had one piece of information and that was reinforcement. The computer's right. The timelines will contract down to some inevitable thing. There is an inevitable event. It's been forecast, it's been predicted, it's been fed to us in a slop trough of what they want us to believe will happen. They don't actually have control over what happens. They only have control over the reaction, and it seems that no matter what they try to do to cause their desired reaction, it's going to have an opposite effect. Much, much easier for me to explain today what that process is as opposed to back then. If I had to give it a name, I would say it's the awakening process. It's an evolution of consciousness that cannot, will not, and no matter what decisions or possibilities are injected into the equation, eventually it all resolves down to us all learning the truth and becoming aware of this massive dam of lies that has been built that keep us from knowing massive volume of information that we should otherwise possess. Essentially what happened with Looking Glass, not only did they not want people to use it anymore because they knew it was just going to burp out the same thing, uh, but at the same time they didn't want anybody else to know what it was saying. I'm sure. Because essence. that information was a monumental concern when I was in the military about how to prevent this inevitability. Now at first I thought it was end of the world. Now I see end of the world as end of their world. The biggest cherry on top of all this conversation um, would be a synopsis to say that if I could convince everybody out there that for all intents and purposes what we believe to be true eventually becomes true. If somebody convinces us that a major disaster is going to happen in the very near future, a major disaster happens in the very near future. If we don't buy into that fear and accept that there is really nothing that we know know is going to happen and accept of whatever happens, that makes the convergence of the timelines happen as naturally as possible. Any attempts to try to go away from this one inevitable conclusion, I again see as a new beginning, uh, an end of this reality, the beginning of something that we can't even possibly understand based on the level of our beliefs currently. But when all that information comes flooding out, there's going to be no denying what's true and what's a lie or what's illusion. Basically what we're experiencing right now is two master chess players sitting at the board. And one of them looks down at the board and sees that he's in checkmate in seven moves. And he looks across at his opponent, and he knows that his opponent sees it too. So there's no getting out of it. So at this point, the loser can only prolong the game. Both players know the game is over. It's only a matter of time before he does this, and then you're forced to do this, and then he's forced to do this, and eventually checkmate. We, as a race, if we could understand that the game is over, that based on the rules of the game, the bad guys have already lost, the good guys have already won, yes there's moves left on the table, but those moves are being forced by the player that is going to win. Um, the only way that checkmate can't happen is if the player that's winning makes a mistake. But from all of the information that I've gathered, all of the information that's been given, 
all of the information that's been vetted to me, it seems pretty obvious that the good guy player on the side of the chessboard knows exactly what has to be done to win the game. And so, at this point, any mistake would be all but impossible. But again, you really have to understand the game to know that the guy that's losing is lost. And I'm sure most people sitting watching a chess match between two advanced chess players know the game's over long after the two players know it's over. Because they can't see the board and see that there's only seven moves left. Welcome back to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight. Tonight is Center of Light Observation, Looking Glass. Just like the gentleman just said, some people can't see looking at the board game by the two most powerful players that just can't see. But when we step back and we can observe, it simply makes itself known. Do you see that? And I don't mean see that. Do you see that? Your future my future, our future, we are living it. How are you living your life? Though we may have a convergence or an, a togetherness as we move down this road together, things are going to start splitting off. Well, you might move, let's say you live in my hometown, right down the street, in fact, next door, in fact, where we're following a timeline of neighborhood and neighbors, and something may happen and you need to move out of state. Point is, likewise, as we move down this collective road towards higher possibility, infinite possibilities begin to insert themselves, which is things are going to reshuffle. Doesn't mean you separate it just because you live in a different region, different country, in fact. But we're getting to this place where all these timelines are coming together, but yet at the same time they're splitting. As I said in the last few presentations, the same door that we enter for higher experience is the same door that drags us into hell. So as we can continue to move down this no time timeline, certain people will come together, tribes will come together. And we'll all do this together. You may not vibrate with my tribe, not neither I or we with yours, but that we still have the same goal in mind. But when we start, or if we continue to live in fear, greed, selfishness, these, these sort of qualities, racism, judgment, calling someone a libtard or whatever we call people, we start creating divisions and you will, you will cease to elevate. We can elevate, 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 but when we get lost in the conundrum of the old world that is, has been already dead, we will no longer elevate. We might go a little further this way, but we won't be able to do this. So the idea is to remove ourselves from all this extraneous stuff because having the ability and the capacity to look through the glass, what is the glass? What is the ultimate looking glass? It's right there. I'm trying to make a visual, but you get the idea. It's clarity. Living in your heart, living in your consciousness, living in your awareness, and always be willing to expand all of those. In all fairness, will be granted to you simply by your seeking. Your eking in of things, and your meeking, I am the meek. You are more strong than you can realize. You have never been weak, though you may have felt it. Look through the glass. How do I do that? Step back. Stop talking. When I say stop talking, I don't mean stop talking with your mouth. Stop talking with your eyes. Because as we see, it's not important just to see. It's important, more important that we look. I got this line from a movie with Val Kimmer called, the movie was called At First Sight, He Was Blind. 
my God, if you have not seen this movie, treat yourself. The eye doctor that regained his sight said, it's not only good to see, it's important that you look. So we don't see through the looking glass. We look through the looking glass with a vision, with a will, with an intention, an agenda. We step back and we see this beautiful unfoldment we called human life on earth in the years of early 2000s. The party is just getting started. James says this year's been, there's been a lot of temporal time point corrections, totally, to get things back on track to the sacred timeline. From homecoming, crossing the bridge to the soul, So, hello, Aziza, Lua. Tonight is center of light observation, stepping back. And when you step back, you begin to look and see, but you don't continue the old game of, well, that's a thing, and that's a thing, and this is that, and that is this. That is exactly not what you want to have happen. You want to step back and stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. Just see it. Well, that's not a good thing. That is talking. That's a great thing. That's fantastic, but that's still talking. It's trying to counterbalance the opposite of the same ego, which is a split, which is dual. So the point I'm deriving to is when we step back and we look, the seeing level should be Oh my God, this is a beautiful unfoldment. That and that alone kind of posture is what opens up the capacity to truly be able to see. When I was in a dark night of the soul many years ago, I was in hell. I wanted out. When I realized that going in is the way out, in hindsight today, not 2020, hindsight 2020, hindsight 2021, 2020 plus one extra, <laughs> I realized that what took place in my life all those years ago was the greatest thing that could have ever happened. Change timelines, same experience, different timelines. From homecoming crossing the bridge to the soul, I speak to spirit and say, this morning I saw a program on the Discovery Channel about the Hubble Space Telescope. Let me, let me stop there. So tonight is center of light observation, looking glass. Military, black ops, whoever they are, they've created apparatuses, conveyances to launch themselves using hardware to future possibilities so they can achieve their selfish agenda. But because we have a purity about us as awakening spiritualists, we can achieve the exact thing using our software via our softness. This morning I saw a program on the Discovery Channel about the Hubble Space Telescope. It talked about how much science has learned, but what flashed through my mind as I was watching was the PC technique, I'll leave that out, you taught me year. You taught me earlier, and how it seems to be the better way to explore the universe. It's implied, and spirit responds. Now let's use in contrast, looking glass project. You can looking glass via the military, trying to the bad military, the whatever people, the they, the aliens that are trying to invade the earth. Sounds strange, I know. One day, in 2021, in future hindsight future hindsight this is true <laughs> this is in contrast to the conveyance to you the one who is connected to the all illumined light source it spirit responds it is common knowledge that when astronomers and other scientists look into deep space to study cosmic occurrences they're witnessing the light from events that actually took place long ago all their high-tech equipment might help prove some of their theories, but without inner vision, being able to consciously look through the looking glass, 
These experts will stay unaware of what is presently taking place throughout the universe. And they're trying their damnness. As long as they remain in a spiritually myopic state, they will not be able to harness, through observation, the power that true cosmic knowledge can bring. On the other hand, spiritualists understand that light is the product of a pure, enlightened consciousness. And so they dedicate their lives to achieving just that. The more they develop themselves and begin to consciously connect to the omnipresent spirit, the more they are able to witness the grandeur, because you can't see the grandeur if we so mundanely focus, the grandeur, the majesty of the universe here and now. And I asked the question, so are you saying that light has no velocity? There is no timeline. What's up, Bob? So I asked Spirit, so are you saying that light has no velocity? Spirit responds, none whatsoever. Light is everywhere at all times or no time, should I say. Just like a hologram, the whole is inherent in every fragment of light throughout the entire cosmos. You might say that God cosmosis is taking place everywhere. This is exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned the gyroscope from the movie Contact. Let me see if I still have it in my clipboard. I do. One moment. This is an, a GIF from the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey, and Tom Skerritt. This conveyance, because th even through movies, the bad people, the cabal, have to announce what they do. So through this movie, they announce this in this movie, this fictitious idea of a conveyance using a gyroscope. Well, what happens through the looking glass from military which is taking place, um, but also through stargates, is in the center or the core of this these rings, it opens up a wormhole literally to the space of God consciousness, which has, there's nothing in there but void and absolute knowing. And this is what they're using these conveyances and this technology for. But you have it. We have it. We are it. And we unfolding this prophecy between now and to the prophecy is not realized. It, it has already been realized, but until it is evident to all of us, right? So in the center of your core, there is a nucleus in all atoms or all things. Many years ago, I did that very meditation. Do it to an, I, I triple dog dare you. <laughs> Challenge you lovingly. Tonight, when you go to bed, or when you want to meditate, sit up or lay down, release all restrictive clothing, get naked, basically. Naked with yourself. I'm ready to move into that very core that turns, burns, churns, and yearns in this, these rings, these endless perpetual rings of possibility. I did this many years ago and I, I found myself above an, the apex of the Great Pyramid. And then I lofted into another experience entirely. So likewise in this movie, fall into a meditation, place yourself in the core, let everything around you begin to happen spontaneously. Use breath to increase the, the speed, the acceleration of the rings. And like in the movie, allow yourself to drop and experience your core. And like the, in the video I posted earlier, well, the link I posted, it's with David Wilcock, which I'm not a huge fan of, but he is on point, in my opinion, for whatever that's worth. That many of other people have talked about, insiders, of what the dynamic is that happens when people use such apparatus. So we can use the same apparatus that in the movie and the military are depicting because using pictograms, pictures, images, creates, ah, I know what that is. And so we can actually move into it greater versus, 
Well, I'm not sure exactly how to do that. Well, here's a cookie, chew, and the cookie, oh, this cookie tastes fantastic. Now you have a starting point and a measurement stick of what it is you want more of. We are this spinning hologram gyroscope of experience. And so when we begin to spin ourselves to experience that experience, then we join board on board with a greater vessel, call it a mothership if you want, a divine ship if you want, parent ship if you like. So tonight has been observation, center of light observation, looking glass. Are you looking through your glass? Can you see clearly? I can. And I, I effort every day to see ever more clear. Ever clear. You watch them ever clear? <laughs> but I strive to see ever clear. And it becomes simply apparent to me when I simply put my focus through the looking glass on my parent. On my apparent, it becomes apparent to me. Because we begin to see, most importantly, we begin to look. And in our intention to look, seek and ye shall find. The kingdom of God was within. Neither shall they say low here or low there. It does not exist. There is no low here or low there. All there is is a high here and a high there. How you doing? So there is the looking glass effort of military. I get it. Technology wants to expand. It's in its very nature. Technology is alive. Some of it is AI. Some of it is a spawn of the conscious spiritual human beings that say, this is an expression of technology. And I divulge it to everyone. And it's powerful. And it's up to everyone to understand its level of power and use it to shower grace versus deface everything that has ever meant anything at all. And it's only those who hear the call and the others will take a hard, head-knocking fall that will last another cycle, not only another cycle, cycle after cycle after cycle. And that's okay, because when you can not only see because you have looked, now you can actually see, you will see that them doing all this folly is just an unfoldment of their own unconscious, ignorant, beautiful mess of a path. And we bless such a, such a path because in the aftermath, we have become that ourselves because we've had that shit all our life. And so it goes nowhere to blame them for what they are doing when we were the ones in past doing the same thing. We become hypocrites. So it's all a beautiful unfoldment. And it will take all of us to observe without talking, without talking, without talking, to truly see the language of the divine. I am the word, the word was God, and it's everywhere. It's holding even those nonsensical things together that we think should just leave us forever. It doesn't work that way. Because if they could leave us, they wouldn't be here. They're here as God's grace to say, I love you so much, I'm gonna stick this in your face. Get a taste of that. What do you want? What do you want? You can have anything. As we all collectively move down, forward, inward is upward, forward is tr inward is upward, upward is forward, and forward is toward. As we move through this experience of evaluation, integration, and graduation, there is no explanation, nor will there ever be, for the craziness of the beautifulness of the enigma of God. Even a rod, real or facade, we can't understand it. So what is the point if we can't ever understand it? That's the point entirely. It's not about understanding something logistically. There's another level of being 
another level of seeing and exists in the core. How do I exist in the core? You step back. Don't label anything. Don't insert yourself. Be a ghost. Practice this every time you can. You're going to go to the store and get a few things. Be a ghost. Become proficient at being a ghost. No one can see me. Cloak yourself. Practice your power. Not because you want to disassociate with people, but practice your power. No one's going to see me. So you cloak yourself with energy and you move through the store and nobody's in your way. Because, because, well, they might be in your way because they can't see you. <laughs> so practice being a ghost for the sake of getting out of the world and you cannot participate. This would be the equivalent to the path of a true master because true masters are in the world, but they're not of it. They cannot participate. God is not only in the world, it is the world, but God cannot participate. God cannot violate our free will unless we invite. Same with higher level extraterrestrials. Same with higher level angelic beings. They're not, they cannot simply just come in and make their business known because that's what they want. That's their agenda. It will never happen. So through observation, when we become clear, clarity itself can now pass through and become the most dear thing that we can ever hold. And when we hold that looking glass, all good things shall come to pass. And at last we will be in the garden. Don't kid yourself. There's a mighty force at work that is an unconscious consciousness and it wants to nibble on your backside and it will do so as long as you let it. When I say backside, I mean the backside of your derriere, the backside of your consciousness. Every word, every word, every feeling, every thought, everything that we don't even understand exists is vibrating in this cosmic unified field. The question becomes simply, what is it that you, I, and the we yield? Are you harvesting a bountiful fruit? Look through the looking glass. Step back, even from your family. Keith, I can't do that. Sure you can. Is it possible that your greatest contribution to whatever family situation, good or bad, might be transpiring as you're stepping back? Because you're now hearing which really in the back of everything, which is the source, of course, you can hear the whisper. And now you know when to step in consciously versus erroneously and irritating everyone else through your said helping. Here's a second and third helping for you to feel your spiritual belly. <laughs> Observe, don't talk, don't talk. Don't talk, don't talk. It means, shh, just observe. I see a beautiful unfoldment happening to people I care about, and they're going through a dark night of the soul. As to why I even care about them even more. Some people will deny your help because their spirit's not ready to hear it. And you will undermine their development. And some simply don't care because of pride. They want to rebel. Don't try to make me like you. I want to be me. Enjoy that because it is beautifully yours. And some people just want out of the mire. They want into the fire to acquire their desire to be with that which is the majestic, powerful, infinite, higher. Look through the looking glass of your heart, not your head you will find something. It's not only important to see, you must look. And when I see and look at you, I see my destiny, which is we're forever going to spend time in joy. Your love beyond measure. See you soon. Blessings.